Summer activities in the age of COVID-19 is not easy. I mean, there's a lot to consider. Mm -hmm. Which ones are safe and which ones could potentially expose your family? Tonight, Channel 2 investigator Joel Eisenbaum breaks down what the experts are saying about risk rankings. Okay, so we're back open pretty much. How was it? We didn't go anywhere for about two months. That was then. This is now. And Colleen Cassidy has a question about how to deal with now. I mean, she has five kids. Samantha, 22. Patrick, 21. Colin, 18. Ethan, 16. And Jackson, 7. Colleen and lots of parents and grandparents have questions about which activities are supposedly safe and which are not. It's hard. Like, you do. You question it. Like, should I be doing this? Certainly all manner of news outlets have attempted to answer this burning question of what's safe and what isn't, employing various rating systems. And truth be told, we set out to do the same thing. Water park, thumbs up, thumbs down. Right now, thumbs down. <laughs> the thing is, it quickly became apparent our methodology was flawed. A wet blanket, I mean a doctor, made that abundantly clear. Would you take your kids to the pool right now? I'm kind of scared to get on a plane or certainly to take my kids on a plane. Yeah, that one maybe I won't, uh, I won't answer if that's, if that's all right. As a point of order, we should point out the CDC has a lot of guidance on summer activities and transportation and all sorts of stuff. How to carry it all out safely. But Dr. Kulkarni here with the Baylor College of Medicine thinks rating these activities, their safety can generate a false sense of security. Activities like going to the pool, camping, backyard get-togethers, Airbnb vacations. It all depends. There are so many variables. Take a hotel stay, for example. It depends on the hotel. What were the cleaning and disinfection procedures? Does the hotel have rules about how many people can congregate? They have a policy on they have face masks. The key is knowing what you're getting into and asking specific questions about disinfecting procedures, social distancing measures, and face covering rules. Even if you rank it lower risk, it can suddenly become high risk because of what that facility is doing or not doing. This is where I spend all my time. Colleen Cassidy does ask those questions and she pairs it with common sense. So fishing's okay. Yeah, you're not sharing anything really. I mean, you're, you're holding your own fishing pole. <laughs> The bottom line guidance here is don't just look at the activity and say yay or nay. Look at how it's carried out and who you're relying on and ask specific questions about spacing and cleaning procedures. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Joel